And we're back. Now, we're into what everybody's been waiting for. Batteries. Yeah, and these batteries are going to charge a flashlight that we're going to assume is really powerful. So if we go outside and saw the full moon, we've got our flashlight and we want to shine that light to the moon. So the question is, if you did shine a light to the moon, which of these two representations, the top or the bottom, actually is more like reality? Okay, so on the top, looks like the light beam just got to the moon, got there very quickly, and that second we can see the light beam has finally reached the moon and is still traveling there. So the question is, which of these two scenarios, the top or the bottom, represents the reality of light? Does light travel in about a second to the moon, or does it take a little longer, like in the bottom picture? I'm going to argue the top one. The nah, light, I don't know. Light is really, really fast. It is really, really fast. But the moon's really, really far away. So then you're saying that's the bottom video. Mm, yeah. Why? Well, just because it would take a lot longer for the light to get to the moon than, what, that split second there that they were looking at at the top. But when I turn lights on in the room, they just turn on. Yeah, just because we can't perceive it just doesn't mean that it doesn't take long for it to travel. Everything takes time to travel. Sound, light. So things definitely... Uh, take time. So if we wanted to come up with an answer to this, figure out which of these two videos is pretty much what happens in reality, what information do we need to know? I would use a formula that included speed because we know the speed of light. We do. The speed of light is about 300 million meters a second. That's or if you prefer, 300,000 kilometers a second. So it's pretty fast. It is pretty fast. But you're talking in kilometers and all that stuff. For us in America here, we deal with miles. I'll convert that for you real quick. It's 186,000 miles every single second. So okay. light is quick. So if, that's why I, my argument for the top video is you turn it on. If light travels that quickly, boom, it hits the moon. Right. But another thing that we need besides the speed of light and a formula to use it in, uh, we also need the distance to the moon. So if we could find the distance to the moon, then we could do a quick division problem. The moon is 238,900 miles away. That is so correct. almost 239,000 miles away. Now we know the speed of light, and we also know the distance to some object. Right, so if we take the formula, if we manipulate the formula, uh, speed is equal to distance over time. We end up with time is equal to distance over speed of light. So if we just take that value that you just found and divide it by the speed of light, we should get a time in seconds. So there's your equations that you came up with. So we've got the moon right there. We know that the Earth is 239,000 miles away. So if I look at all these divisions here, so right around this midpoint here, we're at 119,500 miles from Earth. And how far did we say light could go in one second? 186,000 miles. So in one second, the light's gonna leave the Earth and travel to right about here. That is one second worth of time. So it's yes, almost it like what the top video said. That light beam is turned on and pretty much hits the moon in one second. But it actually doesn't hit it in one second. It's gonna take a little bit longer and to get the exact timing we can use your equation and you get around 1.3 seconds is the earth moon distance so the top video is the more accurate video so light is quick and your argument would have been good if the moon was what a lot further away there you go so if the moon was further away that's truly how light would travel to distant objects but to close objects, light gets there very quickly. Try one more example. Where do you want to go? So what's your favorite place to go in our solar system? In our solar system, I'd have to say Neptune. Neptune. We've got the Earth on one side, we've got Neptune on the other side. Let's figure out how far away Neptune is if we could travel light speed. And what I mean by how far away, the time it takes to travel that distance. So research shows that Neptune is 2.7 billion miles away. So light traveling only 186,000 miles every second. In the first second, light's pretty much right here. And in the next second, it's right there. And the next second, it's there. Mm -hmm. So that light beam is traveling more like the slower video you picked in the beginning. 
So let's send that beam of light out and figure out how long it takes to get there. Doing your equation, we take the distance, 2.7 billion, and divide it by the speed of light, 186,000. It takes light 14,516 seconds to get from the Earth and fly all the way and hit Neptune. That's anything that travels light speed. That many so hours. A beam of light, a radio wave, a microwave, a text message are all forms of light. That's a lot of seconds. Yep. Let's convert that down. So our final answer for how far away is Neptune, if we could travel light speed, is around 4.03 LHR. What, what is LHR? Well, it's l how far light goes in an hour. So it's a light hour. So a light hour. So rather than saying 2.7 billion miles away is the distance from Earth to Neptune, you could really just say... It's four light hours away. It's four light hours away. Mm -hmm. The moon is how far away? One light second. About one light second. So rather than saying these ridiculously large distances, once we get into things, especially in space, things are far away and it takes long, a long time for information to get there. And that's where the term light year comes from because in a light year, you're talking about how far light travels in a year. Example I always like to give is if someone was living on Neptune and you sent them a text message and you said, sup, how long till they get that message? Well, let me wait four hours and I'll get back to you. So he'll get the message in four hours, then I'll, he'll send back what? Sup. Another sup. I'm going to have to wait another four hours for that return once he gets the message. So an eight hour long text message just for us both to say, so, so that's what we're going to be looking at when we look at things in space. Since things are far apart, it takes time for that information, the light, to come to you, which means that anything you see out there in space is in the past. And so is this video. Right now. See you later.